Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, it's John from Heroes and Legends. And welcome to the special edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch, where we're going to check in with a singles market for Iconic Masters now that we're entering the fifth week since the release, and also Unstable now that we're entering the second week since that set has been released. So, I got hit with the flu, so bear with me here. I'm going to do my best in this video. I might go kind of quick through everything today, try to get this one out to you pretty fast, because tomorrow I hopefully will be closer to 100% for my regular Market Watch video that we do on Saturdays. That's the intention anyway. So, just a quick reminder before we get started. If you check out the description below, you'll find a few ways to support what we do here at the channel. Patreon's linked below. You're also going to find links to some Amazon products as well as Flipside Gaming where they give a promo code for our viewers. All of those are ways to help out the channel. So thank you in advance for checking that out. With that being said, let's get into it. We're going to start off with Iconic Masters, the top 10 cards that have gained value in particular. So last week we saw that the gains were extremely conservative. Has that changed any? And eh, not really. The top two cards are at least interesting to look at, and we'll talk about those in a few moments, but the first eight, quite honestly, probably could have been anything, just very, very slim increases. But I'll show them to you really quick because I just want you to get an idea of just how slowly these cards are moving, or I should say, maybe not slowly, but moving in the other direction. Number 10, Mana Leak, up 2 cents to 19 cents. Number 9, Windfall, also up 2 cents to 44 cents. Number eight, Primeval Titan, also up two cents to 608. So see what I mean? These could have been almost any cards. Number seven, Sarah Ascendant, up two cents again to 769. Number six, Thunderball Hellkite, up four cents to 352. Now we're moving. Number five, Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker, up four cents to 601. Number four, Supreme Verdict, up six cents to 350. Number three, Lightning Helix, up seven cents to 237. And here's number two, Elish Norn, up 19 cents to 1475. Okay, this is the first one that's at least showing some sort of indication of something. Not a whole lot, mind you, up 19 cents. But at the very least, this is showing us a card that's trying to find a stable price point. Going up less than two dimes, but it's not going down significantly. So that's important to know that maybe, at least temporarily, Elish Norn is starting to find a foothold. Now, I do have to warn you one thing, though. Even though a lot of this product's been open, a lot of it's in the market, the market is very saturated right now, people moved on to Unstable about a week ago. So there's still a lot of Iconic Masters product out there on open. There's a lot distributors have that they can't get rid of. So you have to think about these packs in the future being open too, not just this week or next week or the week after, but for months and maybe years to come, which is very interesting when you start to contemplate what's going to happen with some of these cards over time. But, at least for the short term, maybe this one's stabilizing a little bit. Number one, Archangel of Thune, up 40 cents to 1243. So again, nothing huge here, but at least interesting to look at. It's a card that's trying to find a foothold. Now, it is an awesome card. Great for casual play, great for commander. The card does see a tad bit of modern play in, like, Obstant Company, but sometimes just a one-of in the main, so it's not a huge modern card. But, it is a big deal in a lot of places, so... Yes, this card goes up the most significant of any card in the set this week, so that is worth noting. All right, let's move on to the cards that have lost value this week. For a lot of people, this is what they really want to find out about. Is it time to buy into the singles? Well, I'll tell you right now, probably not quite yet. These are still going down at a nice pace. Not as much as they were going down the previous weeks, but they are still going down in a nice clip. You'll see that in a second. Also worth noting, the Commander-centric cards are losing some value this week. We'll see a number of them on the list. Some of these were the hottest cards over the first few weeks as commander players were fine buying into the cards that they wanted for their decks, but now that they have them, you're starting to see those go down with the rest. Number 10, Shieldred Whispering Wand, down 28 cents to 9.99, an example of a casual card that is taking a small loss this week. Number 9, here's another one, Avacyn Angel of Hope, down 28 cents to $14. Fantastic for commander, taking a little bit of a hit this week. Number 8, Oriok Champion, now 33 cents to 569. Now, this card still sees modern play, not as much as it used to. Now you see it sometimes out of the sideboard, but still a great card for casual play and casual decks. And again, this one takes a small hit. Number 7, Kokusho, the Evening Star, now 39 cents to 667. So, 
Same story here, another fantastic commander card, great casual card that's going down a little bit. Number six, Magus of the Moon, down 54 cents to 841. Now this is a card that does see a lot of constructing competitive play in the right decks, like Big Red and Legacy, for example, but a lot of decks will prefer Blood Moon unless they're trying to pressure their opponent early like a Big Red deck would. But what's kind of interesting about this card was the high price point attached to the Future Sight version for the longest time was really due to the fact that the print run for Future Sight was pretty low, just in the scheme of things. So now that there's another option to pick up this card, this card's dropped a lot since it was released, and it will continue to drop some more. Number 5, Aether Vial, down 57 cents to 3160. Now this was a card that was actually performing pretty well the first couple weeks, but that was because there was a mad dash for people to assemble that Humans deck. This is an awesome card, it's played in more decks than Humans, of course, but the Humans deck was really driving the price point early on when the set was released just because that deck was hot at that time. And it's still hot, but at that time a lot of people were trying to put it together. So what's happening with the card now? Well, it's going down as the supply is now caught up with that demand and then some. Number four, Grove of the Burn Willows, down 82 cents to 12.74. Another great card, especially for like vintage legacy combos of Punishing Fire. But again, the amount of people that want this card versus how many copies were out there prior to this set, there's definitely a disparity there. So keep that in mind. Another Future Sight card that was a little more valuable due to the scarcity more than anything, probably. Number three, Fluster Storm, down $1.23 to $23.82. Kind of the same story here. Commander 2011 version of this at one point was up to $100. It's come down a lot since then, of course. But the people that love this card and play it in Vintage and Legacy, they probably have their copies. But the scarcity was what was driving price points. And as more packs get open, the supply is getting much higher. So this card does continue to go down. Although, starting to go down at a slower clip than it has been. It will lose more value, don't get me wrong. But it's trying to find a price point. Number two, imagine that, another Future Sight card, Horizon Canopy, down $1.29 to $32.99. So some of the reasons I mentioned with the Future Sight cards apply to this one too. This one also had the scramble for picking up the card from the Humans deck folks as well. So do you have to keep that in mind, especially those first couple weeks where the card wasn't going down very much. But now we have seen this card decline over the last couple weeks. And number one, Mana Drain, down $1.94 to $72.85. So I mentioned this in the previous videos, of course, stands to reason the highest value card, the crown jewel of the set, is going to lose the most value just overall when it comes to more packs getting open, more supply entering the marketplace. But one thing I will say, this is actually holding this value better than I would have predicted. Now I said this in other videos, but the people that play this card in Vintage, they probably already have the card. So this is your commander market more than anything. Some commander players may want more than one copy, but many commander players are going to be happy with just one, especially at this price point. So that is going to drive sales a little bit, so keep that in mind. But beyond that, it's very, very iconic, and a lot of people just want a copy to have. It is the crown jewel of the set. It's kind of the big chase card. All right, let's move on to Unstable, and Unstable is really weird to look at. You're going to see that as we get into these cards. Now, we're going to look at the cards that lost value first, and you're going to notice that we see a lot of cards here that are maybe popular, like last week right when the set was coming out, and now as packs are getting open, you're seeing less of a demand out there for them. However, there's a lot of cards on the flip side in the next list that are actually going up, even though a lot of packs have been opened over the course of the week. And we'll talk about those in just a second, but let's see what's losing value first. Number 10, Earl of Squirrel, down 27 cents to $1.06. Actually, a very good card, very cool card, real cheap to pick up now. Number 9, BB Gun, down 31 cents to 112. Awesome contraption. Number 8, Spike Tournament Grinder, down 35 cents to $1. I think a lot of the cards that you're going to see doing well in this set are cards that convert well into cubes. And this one doesn't convert well into cubes all the time because it can really create some problematic gameplay. Depending on what cards you have access to, you can simply play this and basically win the game, depending on what you can go and get and how much mana you have to cast it. So, I don't know, it's a very awkward card. I probably wouldn't want to put this in my cube, so maybe some people feel the same way. Number 7, Very Cryptic Command, down 67 cents to 1049. This is the Wayne England variant, and this is an awesome tribute to him. Amazing art on the card as well by him. So... As you can imagine, this had a pretty nice price point coming out of the release time period. It's gone down a little bit this week, but not all that much, quite honestly. Just a really cool tribute card here. Number six, Urza, Academy Headmaster, down 94 cents to 7.48. Well, you can imagine when it comes to Planeswalkers, basically, they have some of the higher price points coming out of the release of the set because they are one of the more unique cards in the set. 
Same thing happened here. Now as packs are getting open, people are getting their hands on the card. Number five, Sword of Dungeons and Dragons, down a dollar twelve to four ninety two. It's another card that had a pretty decent price point coming out of the release, and this one was a reprint from the Hascon promo pack that you could get there or on the Hasbro website if you're really lucky. So because there was a lot of hype around this card initially, it had a nice price point coming down a little bit this week. Number four, Very Cryptic Command. This is the Scry 3 variant, down 259 to 740. So this is down a little bit week to week, but again, I think all of these Very Cryptic Command cards have been popular just due to the fact that they're great cards. They add a lot of versatility to the game if you happen to draw it. And you know what? This is something I'd want in my cubes, and I think that's a driving force. Now, these are also technically Commander legal through January 15th. Is that enough to move the needle on values for these cards? Yeah, probably. That's probably why you're seeing the better cards that actually contribute to gameplay doing well. But at the same time, some players after January 15th may still play with them in certain play groups. But after that, I do think this is going to become a more cube centric set. Number three, very cryptic command. This is the draw card from an opponent's library variant down 524 this week to 975. So now we're starting to see some significant losses in card value. And again, it's just due to the fact a lot of packs are being opened and some cards are just going to lose more value faster than others, especially if people are starting to gravitate to certain variants of these cards, like the Wayne England variant, for example, lost a lot less than this one. Number two, guess what? It's very cryptic command. This is the untapped two target permanence variant down 605 to 794. And finally, number one, very cryptic command. This is the counter target black bordered spell variant. Down 707 this week to 743, so that's pretty significant. All right, let's move into the cards that have gained value this week. And spoiler alert, it's only two different cards technically. Well, they're all different cards, but name-wise, two different cards. <laughs> and these are cards that are actually very powerful cards, so let's look at them. Number 10, every thingamajig. Of 41 cents to 143, this is a sacrifice of land, you gain two life variant. So here's what's interesting about these cards just generally. They take some very powerful mechanics from the history of magic as well as the history of unsets and they put them together in cards. So, you know what? If I have a cube or I play commander casually and my playgroup is going to allow these things after January 15th, then, yeah, I'm going to be looking at these variants in particular. This is just a very good magic card, quite honestly. So, you're going to see more of these on the list. Number nine, Ineffable Blessing. Up 47 cents to 98 cents, this is the choose a number variant. So as you can imagine, we're going to see a lot of these on the list today, too, because like the previous card, this is just a good magic card, no matter what format you're playing. If it's legal and you can play one of these, you're going to probably want to play it. Now, this particular one, the choose a number, maybe not as great as some of the others we'll look at in just a few moments, but still a very interesting and almost easy way to draw cards. Number eight, Ineffable Blessing of 58 cents to 99 cents. This is the odd or even variant. So again, Maybe not as good as some of the others, but still not bad. Number seven, every thingamajig. This is the Scry 2 variant, up 63 cents to 163. Number six, we're back to Ineffable Blessing. This is the Choose a Rarity variant, up 70 cents to $1.20. Number five, every thingamajig, up 89 cents to 192. This is the Draw a Card, Activate This Ability, only if you have no cards in your hand variant. And again, another very strong situational card. I mean, gives you a lot of potential options, right? So makes sense that players would gravitate towards this. Number four, Ineffable Blessing. This is the flavorful or bland variant up 207 to 249. That's a pretty significant increase percentage-wise, and this is one of the better versions of the card. Number three, Everything Majig. This is the add one mana of any color to your mana pool variants up 213 to $3. Percentage-wise, huge increase. Number two, Ineffable Blessing. Okay, maybe this is the best one, up $239 to $3. And this is the white or silver bordered variant. Perfect for silver bordered cube. And finally, number one, it's the last everything in my jig. This is the original one we saw, the Proliferate variant, up $753 to $794. Great for the counters decks that are out there in Commander, and those are pretty popular. So you can imagine this card would be popular among those players. All right, well, those are the cards for today. So I'm going to edit this video, get it out, maybe get some rest, hopefully, for tomorrow's video. 
Um, thanks for sticking with me uh, through this. I know I probably sounded a little bit out of sorts, but I wanted to get this video done for y'all anyway. And like I said, I am feeling a little bit better. So hopefully tomorrow I'll be closer to 100%. But until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe. Have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.